Hey! Hey! <laughs> How's it going? How you doing, man? I'm doing okay. How are you? Good. I've uh, prepared. See, I got. I represented your entire career. We've got John Wick here. <laughs> We've got a little of this. Oh, and, then, and, and then for you, uh, you have me because I'm I'm a creepy sh so <laughs> no way no <laughs> you're the best man you've been like you've been crushing it with these instagram lives i just they're so enjoyable it feels yeah. like life is normal for a second you know yeah it's been fun man i just thought it was like what can i know it's really tough you know in this industry and like what can i do to help people out and, you know i'm not a you know we really can't go out in the streets and really do much so like how can i help people and i thought maybe take people's minds off of things for a few minutes every day so that's what i've been i've been doing it's so great it's so helpful i don't know if you found this too like like i'll be like i'll put on a movie or or i'll st or i'll read like a, a an article that has nothing to do with the pandemic or anything yeah. and it's so lost in it and then it's over and then i'm like ah oh, <laughs> I know. I, I just oh, I just rewatched uh, Homeward Bound the other day, and for a, like, a good two hours, I was I was in the forest with three animals, and I was having a good time, and then <laughs> and then I went back to reality. Oh yeah. my god! Yeah, you know but you you've been super busy, man. You've been actually helping out a really great cause, Shields uh, for Heroes. What what can you tell us about that, and then the organization? Yeah, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity. To talk yeah, about it. I mean. You know, it's a it's a brand new not for profit uh, charity that started right in the beginning of of the COVID nineteen pandemic, um, based here in New York City. Um, as you know, uh, you know we've we're pretty much on the front lines with the express purpose of getting uh, uh, gear, uh, pr pr uh, protective gear, into the hands of the people who need it most. Um, yeah, and so you know. As it began, uh, obviously the, the the main focus at the beginning was getting into nurses and doctors who were, you know, yeah. who are they they are our, our last line of defense, as you know. Um, but now, um, with the help of people who have given and continue to give, um, we're in over a hundred uh, hospitals and healthcare facilities in New wow. York, City, and it's growing, which is really exciting, especially for something that started a month and some change ago. So, yeah. So, yeah. So, um, but yeah, it's, um, so now we're branching out, you know, as you know, like we're, like I said, doctors and nurses, they're our last line of defense. And we really want to focus on getting protective equipment to the people who are on the front lines. And those are, you know, our, those are the food delivery people. Those are people who work in um, non-emergency healthcare situations, the people who work in sanitation, the, you know, it's just like all of those people who's necessary, they're necessary to keep the world spinning. And they are in need of gear as much as the rest of us. They don't have the ability to shelter the way I've been able to and the way so many of us have been able to. They have to go out and uh, put themselves out there on the front line. So, um, so yeah, so we're branching out and we're looking to, like, you know, get gear to everyone who needs it. Everyone who is, like, finds himself in a situation where they can't shelter in place, where they have to be you know, interacting with other people. And, uh, you know, ultimately, like, the goal is that, you know, if those people are safe, then their families are safe. And if their families are safe, then you and I are safe. Like, I think yeah. the big lesson of this pandemic, one of the many that we'll see is the fact, it's just another reminder how connected we really truly are. You know, how yeah. your, your actions, you know, wherever you are in the world, mm -hmm. you know, they trickle down they affect everyone around you they affect and then ultimately affect everyone in the world so you know again it's like you know i i think um the great thing about shields for heroes is that what they're really trying to do is just you know make it so that you know by saving people's lives we can all participate in doing that we again we can reaffirm that we all care about each other we're all connected and uh and yeah so so that's our goal right now it's um, amazing man yeah, it's pretty, it's, it's, it, it's intense because it's also like, you know, it, it's like, it's so daunting. You know, there are some people who, um, when something like this, and this is where I, you know, like some people tend to, you know, run and hide from a situation. And then there are some people who run right headfirst into it. And the founders of Shields for Heroes are those people. They're the people who like, you know, instead of, you know, 
yeah, they threw themselves into this project. And um, I'm just so honored to play a small part in, in, in helping yeah. them grow. Yeah. And I think that's the, the great thing that we are seeing out of this is, is the positivity and how people are really coming together. And I've seen, you know, just that whether well, it's the tremendous amount of support people are giving frontline workers. I saw there was a story recently in Canada that a frontline worker, someone actually uh, gave, loaned her uh, like an RV to stay in because she had to isolate from her family because that's yeah. what people don't think about when you're working in a hospital, you can't go home and hug your kids at night. Like it's, there's tremendous sacrifice, but at the same time, so many heroes that are really coming out of this story and it's, and it's, and the unification of people for these causes, it's, it's pretty powerful. It really is. And I, again, like, I hope that, I mean, I, not just hope, I mean, I believe that when, when this is, well, I mean, who knows if this will ever truly be over, that's another conversation. Yeah. You know, when we get back into some semblance of what life was like before this, um, and I know that will happen. Like, I, I'm really, I, I truly believe that, you know, this lesson will carry us forward. And, and also, like, I just, I already know that I'm so excited. I, I will never take another human being for granted. Yeah. <laughs> in my life. Like, like, I just, you know. It's, it's true. Like, yeah. I'm not, I, I'm not having as many interactions with people, obviously, anymore. But, you know, even like if you do go outside to walk the dog or do whatever, you do see people. I find, I don't know about you, but I find like people are generally like, happier and i think people yeah. are just more glad to kind of you know be alive and be in the world like i, I mean living in toronto much like new york you're used to the people that you know you don't really get the hellos back sometimes people kind of walk by they're in their own space but it's it's been an, i've noticed that there's like kind of it seems like people are a little more you know positive a little more a little yeah. more upbeat definitely i mean yeah like you know i've like this is part of like people a lot of people ask me like you know why I'm, you know, why I stayed in New York, you know, my mom lives in the Midwest, my in-laws live in, in Pennsylvania, like, you know, there are places, we have friends who have houses upstate, you know, we have, we had places yeah. that we could have, you know, absconded to when this started, but, you know, like, I've lived in New York for, this is my 20th year, and uh, so I was here during 9-11, I was here during Hurricane Sandy, two blackouts, you know, like the whole, like, you know, the shit has hit the fan multiple times since I lived in New York. And like, yeah. I have to say though, like based on those previous experiences, I wouldn't want to be anywhere else because like New York becomes like the biggest small town you can imagine. Like people really truly appreciate each other. And like, and you know, yeah. that idea that New Yorkers are rude is just such a lie. I mean, it's like, I, I've never like, like New Yorkers, I do feel like truly understand what I was saying before in that, like, we're all in this together, like what you do with your life. And it's also because we're all fucking on top of each other in New York, you know, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, no, together yeah. here. So you, you, you learn that like, okay, if you're going to be a dick, that directly affects me. You yeah. know what I mean? So you learn this lesson about how, you know, you're responsible for your neighbors, you're responsible for, you know, you're, for the people who live on your block, for the people who live in your city, you know, it's just, it's this thing that I, I, I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. And plus also like people take it seriously here, you know, it's like, we've seen the worst and we've been through the worst. And, you know, I feel like in that regard, in a way we're safer because we know what this is about. We know what we're dealing with, you know, so anyway. Yeah. No, it's true, man. One one person sneezing on an elevator button in a condo building, it's like, ah, come on. Dude. Small actions. Small no, actions. no, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. We got one here. I saw there was somebody talking about uh, Gotham season six, stuff like that. Anything? I don't know. What What can you, what do we got? What do we got? That's all I can Well, yeah. I, I don't, I, I don't, I don't know anything about that specifically. There's been no talk to any of us about possible season six. You know, we, we, we had a finale where we jumped into yeah. the future. I mean, you know, it's pretty tied a lot of things up in that in that hour. Granted, yeah. I would have loved more yeah. time. I would have loved more episodes, but you know, it, it, we, at least we had a finale. Um, I will say though that uh, Donald Logue, a couple months ago, we were at a convention and he said that what he had heard is that they didn't throw away GCPD set. That mm -hmm. they they shipped it off to Vancouver or somewhere and they're keep their or oh, wow. maybe a okay. lot in LA. I don't know exactly, but like apparently they didn't destroy it. So hey, there's there's a chance. Um I you never know man for any sort of spin off. I mean I, you know, I will say though, like our show now and I don't and look, I'm not trying to like I, I would 
much rather not have a pandemic. <laughs> Don't get yeah. me wrong. But like, I will say that I think because everyone is watching television and everyone has time now, like our show is more popular now than it ever was when it was on television in the States. Like the fact that it's on Netflix, like, and it lives on, you know, I, at least half the people before, before the world shut down would come at conventions would come 100%. up to me and be like, be like, I just started watching it and holy crap, you know, it's great. And like, yeah. so yeah, so that's a, that's a great thing. 100%. Yeah. I know, I know. If, if they if they want to like tweet Warner Brothers and let them know that <laughs> they want a, a a a movie a spinoff anything hey I'm I'm fine there. <laughs> well, I I know a, a friends of mine that have now maybe they weren't watching certain streaming services before, and I know like my friend Melissa who has probably submitted a question somewhere in here. I just can't see it, but she got Netflix, so she's been watching you and literally, oh, yeah. literally been watching you and sent me a message yesterday saying you got to tell him how amazing he is on the show. So you are yeah, you are. I feel like it's a great time to like, have projects like kind of out there in the ether because people are watching people are watching. I mean, for real. And also like, can we can we just talk about how like, think, I mean, if this was going to happen, which obviously it was always going, we know that it was only a matter of time until something like this happened. So a pandemic yeah. occurred. I mean, thank God it happened when we had Netflix, when we, when the internet, you know, like oh, the man. technology has been like a lifesaver. Like, I mean, just, and, and again, not just entertainment wise, but socially, like I, you know, I play bingo with my ne with my nieces and yeah. you know I mean, like, I feel like I have some sort of semblance of, you know, yeah. Connection to them, even though we're thousands of miles away. Like, well, yeah, because like I'm pretty sure you know the the Raven that I would have tied the note to would still be flying to New York <laughs> to deliver this this message. You right. wouldn't even have got it yet. Exactly, I would have been like, yeah, I would have been like adopting pigeons for yeah. homing purposes, like Mike Tyson or something. Yeah, you're like, oh, Mother's Day, better send some pigeons out. Yeah, to, to <laughs> right. Godspeed, pigeon. Hope yeah. you make it. It w it's crazy to think like, yeah, with all the technology, I'll be taking for maybe, I don't know if we take it for granted, but you know, it's a, it is a great time. Like not having it, like, oh my God, I'd be like, I'd be like collecting rocks. Like, what would I be doing? Like, oh Wait, what would we be doing? What would be, I think about like when I was, yeah, like I grew up, I'm older than you are and I grew up without internet. Like, what would I have done? Like what, and how would, how would we have taught kids? Like, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, like it's just it, yeah. in some so again like I always find like when I'm having like anxious moments or thinking about like you know just or when it just gets to be too much like I will recommend to you and to everyone out there like it, what really really helps is just is this sounds so cheesy but like really like counting your blessings and 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 actively mm -hmm. listing in your mind the things that you're grateful for. Because like the, it, it really does help. Like it helps. Like it, it brings my anxiety down. Yeah. Because, and it puts it all in perspective. You know, like. That's true. Um, you know, but again, I know that people are out there, dealing with so much more, so much worse situations than I am, and so like, I, you know, I don't know. I right, said, so, well, well, Kelsey has given me her phone, so now I can. I'm watching us on another screen, so I can. I can read. The, <laughs> I can read the comments now. Great. Uh, there, there was another. Speaking of you, people were asking about you season three. Is there anything yeah. that you you know about that as well? I don't know anything, unfortunately. I mean, you know, it's like, you know, again, and I think they they, you know, like, I'm really I'm hopeful because again, like, I made it out of the box. No one, I'm the first one to do it. Yeah, my character was, and so like that's <laughs> you know that's a that's a big deal. Um, and you know, I've been getting a lot of love from the U writers room. Um, so I'm also like sitting here, of course, I'm just like on Instagram all the time and I'm like, mm -hmm. they, they posted about my character. What does that mean? <laughs> you know? Yeah. But, uh, but I don't know. It's yeah. Anything. I mean, it would be like, I, I, since that show is so, I'm interested to see what they do regardless if I'm in it or not, because that show is so much about our current world like it's yeah. a it's it takes place it's like you know it's supposed to take place right now mm -hmm. and um all i i have to say like you know the idea of of joe and and you know like like and now love of the idea of both of them like 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 you know dealing with a pandemic along with you know all the other stuff they're dealing well with. you would have been safe in the box right it was i mean you're quarantined 
Totally, exactly. I know. I made a joke on my post about it. I was yeah. like, prepared for this, weirdly. Yeah, you were <laughs> self-isolating before it was cool, right? Like, totally, yeah. <laughs> I saw another comment here from from Bree uh, was asking how how we met, and I, I guess I don't know was it was it Ed, Edmonton or Calgary or one of those things. It, it was it, well, I don't well. Okay, I'm trying to think of. Could it have been Toronto? Did did you do the fan expo? It might, and I know we met. Yeah, it might have been Toronto, but I know also we ran into each other at San Diego at one of like the Entertainment Weekly after parties. I remember the whole yes. cast was there, and there was I, we've seen each. I think it was one of those things where we just like saw each other at enough different things, and we're finally yeah. like, "Oh, hey, how you doing? Yeah. I, I remember you." Well, you know, I, I, yeah, you like, you know, you you talk, you you know, you've talked to like a ton of people in the business, and you do panels and all that. But it's like, you know, at some point there comes a thing where it's like, um, can can we like be friends? <laughs> like, can we like actually like, like, yeah. you know, it's stupid that we're not, you know? Like, well, it's, so it's so cool to like have those people because it's when you go to these cons, there's such a, you know, a group and you know, it's good to have people that, and you also look forward to like seeing friends too. I always love like, when I, when I'm going to a show that you're at, it's always so much more exciting because I'm like, oh, I'm going to see Robin and we can like yeah. hang out and, and totally. talk about life and, you know, other non-con things. Exactly. Like, like talking about anything other than the business is just so, like, great. It's just so, like, relaxing in those situations. Because, 100%. I mean, you know, it's, it's all good. Like, but, you know, you're there to talk about the shows yeah. and this and the, the, and, the, and the work and all of that. And, you know, but then, you know, you go into the green room and it's, like, literally the last thing I want to talk about. Yeah, it's Gotham, unfortunately, you know, like, it's true. Like, I, I want to save that for the people who, you know, yeah. who want to you, know about it. As somebody who's, you know, gotten so many questions about so many things over the years, what, what would the what would the one question be that you get the most? Do you know what it, what it is? It, I will. And I and hopefully people will listen and not ever ask this question again. It's like, <laughs> it, it, it's the worst question because and no offense to anyone who's asked it. Like, I understand why you would ask it. But yeah. Uh, it's it's the question if you were going to play if you were to play any other character on Gotham who would you play, and it's like, come, like n no like hold on a I second can't... let me let me just cross that one off here. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> go ahead continue. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, it, it's it's that question because it's like you know yeah. like how could I how could I improve or like how could I even touch what Corey Michael Smith did or what yeah Sean Pertzby did or what Aaron Richards did I come on like I mean it's like I can't you can't like like we were all meant to play these characters and uh and yeah and like I I there's a reason why you know that the the penguin is so close to my heart is because it mm -hmm. felt like I was born to play it and like I couldn't play it I couldn't do anything else like you know so anyway there's a reason casting directors get paid the big bucks man there's a reason yeah, you get the roles that you do it makes sense totally and i have to say like shout out to uh the gotham the casting directors of the main cast are were uh, are uh sherry thomas and sharon bialy and they cast breaking bad and they cast better call saul and like you know they've cast like some of the best the walking dead you know they're they're like mm -hmm. the, the best in the business. And so like, yeah, the fact that they remembered me from other things that I went out on is just like, yeah, goes to show how awesome they are. And speaking of non, you know, work talk, this is a great question from Sharia at the bottom. Uh, how did you feel about the Cats movie? <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, that's another, that's a, that was a quarantine viewing for me. Okay. Fantastic. How did I feel about it? Look, okay, I, you know, I, I grew up listening to Andrew Lloyd Webber. I we had the Cat soundtrack, we had the Phantom soundtrack, we had I, the first musical I saw on Broadway was Starlight Express, which okay. you know, was like you know it's basically cats on roller skates and their trains for some reason. Yeah. But uh, but but yeah, so I yeah. was like well aware, and like anyone who like knows anything about that musical knows that it's batch crazy. It makes zero sense. There's no plot. There's nothing, mm -hmm. and like. Look, I love it when there's a movie where they spent that much money and it goes so off the rails that it actually goes into, yeah. like, I think it's genius. You know what I mean? Like, 
Like I think like it's 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 camp. It's like that's camp right there, you know. What's like and this generation's like, like the room with like Tommy was so like it's like it's gonna be so bad that it's gonna go down and down in history as like being this this spectacle. Totally, and it's also like how awesome is it? Yeah. That a major studio with millions and millions of dollars threw it behind such such a crazy idea, and regardless if it was successful or not, like. It. it was like look at we're talking about it now it was that <laughs> success you did know? you hear that I, I think i think it's true there was a visual effects artist who has now come forward that said that he was tasked with spending hours digitally removing all the buttholes of all the cats <laughs> yes totally <laughs> i guess they originally had buttholes and then they like like who thought that was like why like, you know I, you would think he would re i mean yeah like <laughs> I don't know what to say about that. I, and also, like... Like, do you think Taylor so Swift knew that when she signed on? Do you think Taylor Swift was aware that her cat would have a butthole? <laughs> she was... <laughs> I, who knows? Maybe it was a practical effect. Maybe it was thrown <laughs> into the costume. I don't it's just, know. It was all performance capture with a, with a, with a, little, with a little pink uh, jelly bean on the back. <laughs> yes, <all> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Dude. Um, yeah, it's it's unreal, man. Uh, let's see. Uh, would you ever do a musical in the future from uh, Oswald on the comments? Would you ever? I think I think you'd be a great fit, man. No, oh, thanks, man. I mean, I I don't. I I'd really have to like. I'd have to buckle down and take the lessons and do the whole thing. I say I you know I can kind of sing. I sang in in high school, but um, but yeah, like it would be, <laughs> I would it, it would be I I would love to, um, but. But again, I think it would, it, yeah, I don't, I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sure anyone would cast me in that, you know? Hey, Maybe you know. it's a little easier. You could jump right in, you know? You never know. I think this is the time to start just like putting out lots of singing videos. I think we'd all appreciate that. And you never know who's <laughs> okay. watching. You never know who's watching. But speaking well, of which though, we got people from like, I've seen Russia are watching, Brazil. Yeah. It's it's unreal how many people all over the world, man. That's that's got to be a really cool feeling to know that your work has you know touched this many people and these many. And we're we're seeing all the comments, so don't worry, guys. We're all we're seeing all the love. But yeah, like that that's a cool feeling, man. Dude, that's like one of the best feelings ever. And it's also like, yeah, I the fact that like you know the character transcends, you know, like America. <laughs> like you know the fact that it like there's something about the character that speaks to people all over the world. Um, and also, I mean, of course, like Batman speaks to people all over the world, the universal story. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, but it's it's incredible. Like I just, I never, I mean, I, I never, I never expected anything like that. You know, when I started, when I wanted to become an actor, you know, I just, I just wanted to like, I say it all the time. I just wanted health insurance, you know, <laughs> like, like I just wanted like maybe a pension someday but god no yeah not just not to have to like wait tables you know yeah what would do you remember what your first job was before what, in the beginning what was your first job ever do you know what it was my first job ever was um i worked for four days at a telemarketing company in Cedar rapids iowa nice and it was like thankfully i i knew enough not to sign up for the out call department like i was in the in call department so these oh. people were calling me i wasn't calling people but it was like we were running we were like it was about getting people to sign up for like dining club and like travel you know like those special <laughs> club cards where you're supposed to yeah. get like discounts on like gas and like food and stuff <laughs> and then i sat down like on like the third day and like i was like I, I like did the math and I was like, wait, so it, so people would have to like, anyway, it was something like, you know, people would have to like spend so much money to get these discounts that it's like a total scam. I was like, it was like, I was like, it's like my eyes open. I was like, this is, this is bullshit. I can't do this. Plus I hated it. So it was a nice excuse. Like I could be like, I could use my moral outrage to also like actually have a nice summer. So it's like actor training, though. You got you're basically playing a character. You're pretending you're you know feeling something you're not, and you have to probably memorize some lines. It was oh, yeah. Like, yeah, it was like a soft a soft launch into acting. Totally. It, yeah, you know, in a way, it was. It was yeah. It was very like it was like like improv training. It's like you know the script are like the suggestions, and you got like 
talk to people about it. Like, yeah, it was it was awful. Well, buddy, I, I don't want to keep you any longer because I know we've all got busy days sitting in self isolation. And <laughs> yeah, I, I have a yeah, I have a. I don't know. I have to go eat some pizza and watch Simpsons for the millionth time. Yeah, what what are you eating a lot of? I've been asking people like what anything you're eating too much of in in quarantine that you kind of got to cut back on. Well, I I'm married to someone who is fully. I mean, he's a very uh, scientifically minded person. Uh, and he uh, he really embraced the sourdough craze because, oh. uh, as you know, like there's a big there's a big uh, uh, run on yeast in in like actually pa like packaged yeast. Yeah, York, you can't find it. It's like it's like a street drug now. You gotta like you gotta buy it in an alley. Do you have any? Do you have any? Do you hey, any hey you want some of this? I got some. I got all kinds yeah. of. Stuff. Do you have unbleached flour? <laughs> uh, it's like that yeah for real and so like but you know with sourdough it's like you you grow your own yeast and mm. that's you know and so you don't and you just like keep it going like you create like the starter i guess is what it's called and like you you, you like feed it it's like in like little shop of horrors it's like you feed it <laughs> like fresh like flour every night and it keeps growing it keeps going and then you wow. use it whatever. so we've been making like sourdough bread up the ass and i like dude i'm like I, yeah, that's my that's my COVID nineteen pounds. Well, speaking of your husband, I saw I saw a comment that was I was or a question on the comments about a, an interpretive dance squad and some varsity interpretive dance squad. I scrolled yeah. through it. What was what is what is that? What was yeah? What, so uh, so my husband in high school started a dance a, a comedic uh, dance company okay. called the Interpretive Dance Squad, and it's where they do uh, really fun, uh, very obvious interpretive dances to pop songs. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, so, and, you know, he's, you know, they just had a performance on the roof of uh, the Met last summer, which was really what? exciting. Yeah, totally. awesome. incredible. But uh, they do, so yeah, they've been performing around the city for years. And yeah, and so he, um, so of course, it was only inevitable. It was only a matter of time before I was going to join. So yeah, so I would dance with them. And uh, yeah, we have, there's some videos out there. Um, unfortunately, the big one that everybody sees is like, w before we were very, you know, it's it's problematic now that we did uh, Ignition by R. Kelly. Um, so I would like to steer everyone away from that and know that, you know, we are not doing that's been retired, you know, for a while now. Um, but he did also do he, he uh, he's pro the the group is prominently featured in uh, there's a Moby song uh, called New York, New York. Oh, wow. Featuring, featuring Debbie Harry and and yeah, the Varsity Turn to Dance group is the entire video um and there's also uh bridget everett who's a comedian uh performer here in new york city and, and she's you know been on a bunch of television shows she's also a member of the squad wow. yeah check out yeah moby new york new york amazing oh, amazing well in toronto we have a group called choir 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 and they get people together in a large group and they sing songs i feel like we could combine these two we should get the choir yeah. and the interpretive dance we could have like we'll do it in like a, a town square somewhere it'll be amazing Totally, we can be six feet apart. Yeah, <laughs> space ourselves out. But before yeah. we wrap up, I've been doing this with everyone I've had on because we're all at home in self-isolation, surrounded by all of our, our stuff for a little at-home self-isolation show and tell. Do you have an item you could show the class and tell the story maybe behind I it? do, I do. Okay. I mean, okay. You know, I, I think we all kind of know the story, but um, this is my... Uh, City of Gotham, well, not mine, this is Oswald Cobblepot's City of Gotham uh, Certificate of Sanity, um, signed by uh, Hugo Strange. Wow. Uh, yeah, this was the actual prop used in the show when uh, Oswald was finally let out of uh, Arkham. And wow. uh, yeah, and this hangs in my house. Um, Beside and, the real one, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Although I think we had to retire the real one a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, That's so, cool. Yeah, wow. Yeah, it's cool. It's like, you know, like, you know, I didn't keep too much from the yeah. show, but like there are little things like I also in, uh, I, I kept a bunch of the um, when Oswald ran for mayor, we, we the, the props department was, which was an incredible, incredible group of people. They made all like the political posters and the buttons. And so I just like, like, you know, when the storyline was over, like, I just like raided the prop card and like, totally, like, I have like 20 posters and like, you know, stuff like, you know, 
out in my storage unit, but you know. So well, hey, if you ever want to mail something up to me, man, I'll. Uh, I need some. I need some fresh art. I've been. I've been in this place staring at these walls for too long. I could. I could freshen things up a bit. Dude, I get it. I mean, yeah, it's. Yeah, I know. We've been like thinking about like moving these around. Well, we go. We go for plants. Like that's sort of where we go. Like where it's like, you know, that's how we like sort of change around our decor. Um, and now that it's getting nice out, it's it, it's it's much nicer. But yeah. Yeah, I've been doing like I it was I was eating an orange a few weeks ago, and I spit out a seed, and I was like, I wonder if I could grow this. And then I ordered a light on <laughs> I ordered a light on Amazon, and I've actually it's it's sprouting now. So that's my yes! my, my project. That's awesome. <laughs> so that's by a the great time idea. this is done, I might have a full size orange tree. Dude, no scurvy up there. <laughs> The things we do, man. Because I, I, once I was fresh out of puzzles, you know, I had to think of something else. Oh, I know. Dude, I get it. Yeah, I've been, like, crosswording. And, yeah. you know, it's like, you know, and again, it's like, you got to find, you got to take space from the news and from the social media. Like, and, and, you know, it's just like finding all different ways to do that without going crazy. Yeah. But, yeah, well, thank you so much, man, for, for allowing man, people to take a so break from, from you, stuff man. today. Oh, my God. Um. Let's let can we just run through the comments really see? Yeah, sure, man. I can't go ahead. Okay. Uh Jed Juliana says hi. Hi. Mel Shea says crying laughing. Uh oh, Vic VCI Riddler says, I wonder if Corey still got his certificate too. I bet he does, actually. Um, let's see. Hello, hope you're doing well from Bubbly Bats. Hi, Bubbly Bats. Uh Robin, are you planning to be in a movie or a series again? That's from Color Cookie. I Look, there are no plans for anything right now, but I am out there. I, I'm actually, like, uh, hoping to, like, score some voiceover work because that's, like, one of the few things. Mm -hmm. We just get a really fancy microphone. So hopefully, like, you know, Tanner, you're an actor. You know, like, like yeah. just to yourself to any sort of Well, they're doing – I notice a lot of companies have been, like, testing everyone's uh, home studios now to, like, see who can actually record from home. And yeah. if you don't have equipment, some, some are willing to send equipment out. But, yeah, like – Anyone who's got a setup at home, you could, yeah, they're like unaffected, really. They can still work as a voice actor. Yeah, you know, and like we, like we uh, found out about that, and we immediately got one because it was like, yeah. like good sound equipment. Like the value doesn't go down that much if you want to resell it. You know what I mean? And so it's True. like, so we were like, it automatically puts you like right, you know, above a lot or bef you know, in front of the line. So anyway, blah blah yeah. blah. True, All man. Right, dude. Well. All right, buddy. I gotta, I gotta just hold on. I gotta. Yeah, yeah. Totally. I'm gonna go. It's I got every half an hour. I set an alarm. Yeah, I'm just here. This is bleach. So here we go. I, I heard I heard her you inject it into your into your right into your body. It works really well. Oh yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go mainline some of that right once we get off this call. But on, on a serious note, though, back circle back to the beginning. Uh, Shields yeah. for Heroes. Make yes, sure you follow please, them. Get involved. Uh, but you can follow Shields for Heroes on Instagram, spelled out Shields for Heroes. Uh, or if you can also go to shieldsforheroes.org. Um, the link is in my bio. Or if it's not, it's about to be. Um, and, and yeah, and if, honestly, like any, any amount, anything you can do to help, it goes directly to the people on the front lines. And, you know, you really, it, again, it, it's, it's saving people's lives. So anything anyone can do would be really appreciated. Well, th I, know, I know you play... A villain on on TV, but you're a real you're a hero in real life. But oh, get out of here, Tanner! So oh. you. we all are. Everyone doing their part yeah. to stay safe is a is a is a hero in my book. Because again, it's not just about you; it's about everyone. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So thank you, everyone, for playing your part and keeping each other safe. And thank you so much again for your time. Thanks for showing us the certificate. That was so cool. And awesome. uh, all the best to you, buddy. We'll do this again in person when this is done. I love it, man. I can't wait. All Cheers. right. See you soon, pal. Yeah, later, man. Bye. Yeah, Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.